everybody, it's Karen here from tapenscolor.co.uk. Thank you very, very much for joining me today. Uh, this is what I've been making today. Uh, it is a pinwheel pouch. If I take the belly band off and pop it open inside, uh, I've got a little greeting and uh, a coffee bag, a little gift for somebody who enjoys a cup of coffee. It is very, very easy to make this pouch. Stay with me and I will show you how. Here's what I'm going to be using today. I've got a square of DSP from the Naturally Eclectic stack and I've cut this to 8 inches square, so it's 8 inches by 8 inches. I've got a piece of Whisper White to stamp on and I've got some scraps of uh, Lemon Lime Twist, Emerald Envy and Soft Sky that I'm going to be using to punch out. Uh, I've got Soft Sky ink to stamp with and I've got some of my clear faceted gems. I'm going to use the Daisy Stamp from Daisy Delight and I've got quite a lot of punches going on here so I've got the Leaf Punch and I've got the Daisy Punch and I've got a one and three quarter inch circle punch and the Starburst Circle Punch and uh, the main piece of equipment that I'm going to be using is my uh, envelope punch board. I want my pouch to fit one of these, which is um, it's a coffee bag, and I'm given to understand by people who like coffee that it makes very nice coffee. So, uh, three, two, three. I wanted my pouch to be a particular size. Uh, in this case, it's to fit one of these um, coffee bags. Uh, so before I started, I did some experimenting on uh, just ordinary copier paper, right? And I made uh, I made a few of these, varying the measurements uh, until I got got it to be the size that I wanted to. So I know that if I follow these measurements, my coffee bag will fit inside my pouch. And there's a little bit of gapping in the middle, but that's okay because we're going to cover that with a belly band. All right. So. With my uh, with my eight inch square piece of paper, I've got that on my envelope punch board. Let me just have a look at my note here, and it says score at three and a half inches. Okay, and I'm going to go right to the end, and now I'm going to turn it round, and I'm going to score at three and a half inches again. So line my paper up against the three and a half inch mark on the board and same again line it up with that three and a half inch mark and again and one more time three and a half inches and now I'm going to whoops really nearly lost my uh, I don't know what to call this it's not really a bone folder and it's not a embossing stylus but whatever it is oh, I've got an email whatever it is I nearly lost it so I'm just going to burnish all of those holes okay and then I can put this away and now I'm just going to take my snips and where the lines cross I've got a little triangle and I'm going to cut that out and I'm going to cut all of it away. So I'm going to cut on the, uh, the side of the larger piece. I don't want any of this score line remaining. Normally it doesn't really matter or sometimes I actually want it there but this time I just don't want it. I want to make sure I don't have any of that. Because yes I know we're talking about millimeters fractions of a millimeter but it all helps to get a nice result when you finish now you really do need some sort of double-sided paper for this kind of project as you will see in a minute okay so now I've got that shape so now I'm going to bring in my uh, my stamp and trimmer because what I want to do now is I want to 
score away that edge. Okay, now I've got uh, seven eighths of an inch on my notes. So if I line that up to seven eighths of an inch, that's probably about right. But what I want, I want it to score from that point there. However big that is, I want it to score from that point there. Okay, so I'm going to get my scoring blade and I'm going to move that up and down. And that's why I've chosen to use this instead of my scoreboard because I can kind of eyeball where it's going to be. So rather than tell you, you need to score at seven eighths of an inch. Well, maybe you do, and maybe you don't. And actually, I'm gonna over egg that one a little bit. So let's go back. Don't worry, nobody will notice. Okay, so seven eighths of an inch is my starting point, and then I'm going to to kind of finesse it a bit. So if I was using my uh, my simply scored, I would be constrained to use the one eighth of an inch um, ridges, grooves, groups, that's the word. I would be constrained to have to use those rather than to be able to sort of eyeball it because I want that line to line up with that fold. So I'm just going to turn these over. And if you need to coax the paper to get it to be where you want to be, that's absolutely fine. I'm having to coax this one. And that's fine. And then, then you burnish it in. Okay. So now... Oh, I've decided, uh, I should have said, I've decided to have the pattern on the outside. If I wanted it with mainly plain, which is the patterned edge, I would have folded it that way. But the choice is entirely up to you. Okay. So just fold all of my edges in. All right. And as you can see, I wasn't completely square when I cut some of these. So that's fine because I'm just going to take my snips and I'm just going to trim away these extra bits. And that's why wanted to make sure that you cut on the on the inside and you know what you could leave them that wouldn't be the end of the world At the end of the day it's not life and death it's a bit of paper that's all it is you know nobody died there go. all right now I'm going to my coffee bag inside and I'm also going to add this which is one of the cards that's in the I think it's perfect day memories and more cards um, and I could write a message on the back I could post it on note it just says you're a diamond a jewel whatever okay so now I'm going to close up my um, my pouch so it doesn't matter whether you go clockwise or anti-clockwise, but you start by folding one flap in. And then you fold the next flap over the top of it, making sure that you cover this point. Okay? And then you put the, the next one over. And now the last one is the only one that's a little bit tricky because you've got to go over that one and under this one. Okay, you tuck it in. And there is your pinwheel pouch. I could now leave this as it is and just uh, give it to the recipient just the way it is. Uh, it's an attractive packaging. It's quite secure. It's not going to kind of flop open unless I want it to. But I want to make it a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit prettier. So um, I'm going to make a belly band for it. And I've cut a strip of Emerald Envy. Well, actually, this is an off-cut. 
um, and it's about an inch and a quarter wide it's the full length of the A4 strip and I've wrapped it round the um, my pouch kind of kind of loosely kind of like that uh, so I'm going to put some adhesive on it I'm using fast fuse which is now being discontinued um, I don't know what if anything Stampin' Up will have to replace it um, but I'll actually probably need some on this end as well just to make everything nice and tight and uh, yeah there's nothing wrong with with fast fuse as such I think it's just because the um, the company that make it for Stampin' Up have stopped making it is, uh, is what I was told okay so there's my belly band it slides on and off quite easily and now I'm going to do a little bit of punching uh, I've already done some stamping um, with the Daisy Delight I've stamped the Daisy twice onto Whisper White with Soft Sky ink and I've punched it out and I'm not going to do that on camera because I've done it before lots of times uh, and I've shaped my flower petals so that they've got a nice curve to them and I've added one of the clear faceted gems one of the largest ones into the middle so there's my my daisy is all ready to go onto my package so um, let me have a think what sort of colour I'm going to put this on so Okay, we're going to start with some Knight of Navy and this is a one and three quarter inch circle punch and I know I didn't mention Knight of, Na Knight of Navy when I was giving you the supplies list and it's because I only just decided to use it. I've got my Starburst punch which is such a pretty shape. I do like that very much indeed. So let me see how that looks. I'm okay I'm happy with that and lemon lime twist and the leaf punch and this one was carried forward from the autumn winter catalogue let's have three spots I may use them all I may not all right let's uh, get some adhesive here of the leaves first. So that is looking. We'll have this one down towards the bottom a little bit, just like that. And my daisy dabs into the middle just like that. And because it's liquid adhesive I can kind of play with this to get it where I want it. And then that goes on to my uh, my starburst punch. Uh, I'm looking for my dimensionals, which appear to have wandered off somewhere. Here they are. Here they are. I could only find the mini dimensionals, which you know would have done, but you know, you know what they say. Go large or go home. Backing off of there and center that as best I can. And it might have been an idea to do this before I stuck everything down. Come on. That's it, come off. They can be quite forgiving. Can dimensionals or they can make you pay. Okay, yep, yeah. so uh yeah. So this is what happens when you design on the fly. You get 
interesting results but do you know what the foliage covers a multitude of things there I need to clear out my uh, the nozzle of my tombow do that off screen it's not a pretty sight you don't want to see that okay pop that over there to hide the um, to hide away that overlapped Move that a little bit there you go and yeah, a little bit further in yes I don't really want the leaves sticking out too far and there we go job done there it is finished and uh, I can either present it like this with the daisy on the right hand side or I can turn it round and I can have the daisy on the left hand side and uh, although I've left this blank there's space there if you wanted to you could um, stamp a greeting on a little bit of whisper white and just tuck it in there um, just you know something like you know just to say or you know have a drink on me or something like that but that is it for today and uh, thank you very much for staying with me to the end of this video. i uh, love it if you came back and saw me again. I will be posting uh, more very, very soon. But for now, bye bye.